Auburn lands its fourth stud from the Atlanta area, and recruiting in general really seems to be picking up momentum. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the book, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Let's go. It's uh, episode 26 of the Top Button Podcast, and I'm your host, Charlie Five, and we are going to have a blast. we got tons to talk about. Recruiting momentum seems to be picking up. We picked up a big commit last week, and these Auburn Tiger basketball guys just don't want to lose. Don't want to lose. Not going to lose one for the rest of the season, uh, no matter what the seeding uh, no matter what happens with the seating. So, uh, and we're going to talk all about it. Before we do that, I want to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes, who was present for the SEC tournament championship uh, this past weekend. Give him a shout uh, at uh, activewealth.com or annuity360.net. Uh, check out annuity360.net. We don't, we don't talk about that enough. You can log on there and he'll send you a free book. Uh, Title uh, that has a bunch of uh, guides and, and rules that go along with annuities and, and help you just kind of help your knowledge uh, uh, of different ways that you can protect the wealth that you've built uh, because you've worked really hard for it and Ford's here, you know, to help protect it and grow it. So check him out, activewealthmanagement.com. I'm sorry, activewealth.com or annuity360.net. Tell him C5 sent you. Tell him War Eagle. Tell him you love to bug out and you love those Auburn basketball tigers uh, and y'all probably have a great conversation. So uh, anyway, show them some love Ford Stokes. <clears throat> All right, guys. So last week we picked up our fourth commitment from the Atlanta area uh, in Traveris Dice, one that we've been waiting on at a extreme position of need. Okay. Offensive tackle, 6'6", 275, everybody brags so much about how good this child looks getting off the bus. I mean, he is just very well put together. Again, a position of need, offensive tackle. And then just so happens it's the second commitment in a row from the Atlanta area. You had Devin Williams, the cornerback from Bruford, Buford, and now you got Traveris Dice from Langston Hughes another powerhouse uh, in the Atlanta uh, surrounding areas that just constantly turns out studs. He's got a teammate, Dontra Glover, uh, who's a four-star, uh, he a former Alabama commit. Uh, and then not to mention, there's some younger guys from there. And then, again, just continuing to grow that pipeline in Atlanta. You see Bruce, Bruce Pearl ha really takes advantage of, uh, of the Atlanta area and Auburn. That's been something that Auburn's missed on the football field over the past several years, but that's picking up. You got, you got, now you got Traveris Dice, you got Devin Williams, uh, and then you got your two tight end commits. You got Ryan Gee uh, and Hollis Davidson. All, uh, Ryan Gee's from Alpharetta. Hollis Davidson's from Peachtree Cities. Again, it's not like it's downtown Atlanta, but it's all the, you know, all those that I-85-ish corridor sur uh, surrounding areas of Atlanta that's just rich, rich with talent. And it's only two hours away. And it's not a coincidence, I don't think, that you hired Kenyatta Watson and all of a sudden you reel off two big-time commits from Atlanta. People made fun of me for overplaying the uh, off-the-field coach. Oh, you 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 pump up. You you just tell me everything's great. You tell me everything's great, Charlie Five. You overhype an off the field staff member from it, from Atlanta. Blah 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 blah. Well, who's laughing now? <laughs> who's laughing now? I told you it was going to be a big deal. I told you it was going to pay huge dividends right off the bat. You hire Kenyatta Watson, uh, and you have you reel off two big commits from the Atlanta area. Obviously. Ryan Gee and Hollis Davidson were committed beforehand. But I still want to give it credit. I still want to give credit to my man, Kenyatta Watson. Uh, I know he had nothing to do with those, but 
I'm sure he's that I'm sure it doesn't hurt now to especially holding on to commits, which we've you know had a few uh let go here recently. But Auburn, the recruiting momentum. Look, I gotta make an I gotta make a confession. A little over a week ago, um a little over the week a, a week ago, I was getting a little bit concerned. I was getting a little bit worried. You know, what's going on? You know, you you you're you're negative three recruits basically for 2024 you lose your best you lose your best player uh his name escapes me he flips to UCF uh, a safety from Georgia you lose Antonio Coleman you lose uh another one of your big defensive linemen and and at that point in time you'd only gained one commitment in Devin Williams I think for 2024 so I'm sorry you're negative two uh <laughs> Uh, uh, up until that point in time a couple of weeks ago. Alabama had reeled off a couple of commitments. They had stolen a big commit from us, from a guy, Derek Smith, who I feel like was one of our top wide receiver targets from Selma, which is usually a pretty big Auburn area. I was like, man, what's going on? We take a week off for spring break, right when the dead period opens, which it does seem like everybody's doing that. All the all the schools, are when it's their spring break, they're going ahead and taking that week off, but it just so happened that week was right when the dead period ended. So timing kind of stunk, but then you turn around, you 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 pull off to Traverse Dice, and then you have quite possibly uh, one of the biggest March recruiting weekends from a visitor standpoint that I have ever seen. From as far as when you're talking about the number of high caliber kids. Uh, not only in 2025, but 2026 as well. Uh, I mean, you had some absolute stars. You have, you have one of the uh, possibly the number one recruit uh, that could be uh, could challenge for the number one recruit and Tyler Atkinson in the 2026 class, I believe that was here. And then you you throw in there's just so many names. I mean, tw- there was somewhere around uh, 21 names, 21 kids that were here that are, that are listed. I think there was closer to you know 30. Uh, I think there was closer to 30, especially when you count the kids that were here on Thursday as well. Uh, you had seven kids here on Thursday and then 21 that were here over the weekend, several of them that were extended stays, you know, here multiple days. Uh, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, this is Big Cat Weekend-esque. This is Big Cat Weekend level. I mean, you have multiple five stars, just countless high four-star guys, guys that – you really want to get you really want to get back in, you know, get back in the hunt with guys that you're pushing forward on, guys that uh, you're just be, sort of forming a relationship, coming to see what Auburn's all about. There's a little bit of everything, and man, it looked like they had it going on. You had golf carts everywhere, you had food trucks, music, everything. They really, really rolled out the red carpet, and again, it sort of calmed my <laughs> sort of calmed my nerves a little bit. Uh, especially when you add the commitment of Traveris, uh, Traveris Dice. Look, uh, Cole Pinkston does an incredible job. Uh, Cole Pinkston does an incredible job on these type weekends uh, on on three. Uh, it, it's worth a subscri- It's a it's worth a subscription for his recruiting threads on days like this. And a lot of guys do it well. Cole Cole does does. An incredible job. Keeps a running list, a running thread, keeps you kind of updated. One thing he said in that thread that sort of opened my eyes in, and made me look a little bit deeper is that, you know, he had overheard or he had talked with somebody on staff who said that it's crazy how far ahead of this year that we were last year. It's crazy how far ahead of last – I'm sorry, I said that incorrectly. <laughs> it's crazy how far ahead of last year we are this year already. And not only from a recruiting standpoint, but from a just spring roster standpoint in general. Because if you remember, Auburn added a ton of kids in that late spring portal period. Uh, a lot of guys that played a lot of, of snaps for us. Uh, but you got most of the dudes you want in already. You got them in, uh, in, in January, and a lot of them already making an impact, already making a name for himself. So I think that made me, you know, Take a step back. All right, let's take a deep breath, and let's just really look at this. Auburn has eight total commitments uh, in their class right now. 
again, a great average player ranking, uh, you know, well over well, average, every averaging a four star basically, uh, because of the again, every guy you got is pretty high caliber. And you look at some of your rivals, and while they may be ranked higher, they may have a higher, you know, pl average player. You have eight commits. Uh, I think Alabama's got either five or six, and Georgia's got five or six. So you're ahead of the game from a commitment standpoint and from a number standpoint. You're ahead of where you were last year from a commitment standpoint as well. And then you have just an absolute blowout recruiting weekend and bring in stud after stud after stud. Again, I have never seen this in March before. I've never seen a visit weekend uh, from the amount of, of high caliber players in March before. And I would start it, you know, start it on Thursday and kind of go through the weekend. I mean, it was, it was, it was very, very, very impressive. Get a lot of guys at positions of need that you got to get. Uh, and then a lot of guys, there were some several guys that were committed elsewhere uh, that that showed up, showed up as well. I think main, uh, one of the headliners was uh, Jaden Perlot, uh, a guy that from Buford. There you go. One of Devin Williams' teammates that was hard on Auburn uh, around the time when they were recruiting K.J. Bolden. He's committed to Georgia, but he just, for whatever reason, can't kind of close the door. On Auburn, there's something about Auburn. He just he just loves. He's a 6'3", 200 pound linebacker, versatile guy. He could probably play outside as well uh, as inside. Really like this kid. Again, committed elsewhere. Uh, and I think the surprise, one of the big surprises, uh, two really two surprises, Anthony Turbo Rogers uh, from uh, from Montgomery, running back, committed to Alabama, shows up on Thursday. Uh, four star, five eight, one eighty five, um, electric, electric running back, and then the big headliner, one that you weren't so expecting, that I think clearly is going to be a battle till the end. Uh, Antonio Coleman, who had just flipped, you know, just flipped from uh, Auburn back to Alabama, he's right back in Auburn, right back in Auburn. So again. That just goes to show you that the guys don't quit. These guys don't quit, and it just because a, a there is a commitment does not mean this battle's over. Does not mean that Auburn's given up. Uh, and seeing Antonio Coleman come back is it was was very very interesting. I think it was a shock uh, to a lot of people. Not necessarily a shock, but a surprise. I don't think it was one that was really uh, really um, expected. Uh, a couple other guys that were here that were intriguing prospects. Uh, Micah DeBose. I mean, I've said multiple times in multiple different platforms from the state of Alabama, I think he's my number one want. You look at everybody, Micah DeBose from Viger High School. Into, he's, he's listed as an interior offensive lineman. I think we may have him sort of targeted as an interior offensive lineman. He's like 6'3", 6'4". Uh, 280, 290, massive, great athlete, plays basketball. He's a stud on the basketball court. Uh, just Mobile, Alabama, having a presence. LSU was absolutely surging. Uh, I honestly expected him to already be committed to LSU by now. I expected him to be on their commit list. Uh, last year, LSU took like six or seven offensive tackles, just tackles, like we couldn't get one. Uh, we we ended up getting one uh, high school guy. LSU got somewhere around six or seven. And then this year, it seems like we're going after the interior guys. They've already got three interior offensive linemen committed. Is the tide uh, – I don't want to say is the tide turning because that just sounds bad. Uh, are the tables turning here? You know, is Auburn gaining momentum? It's great, great, great to get Micah DeBose back in Auburn. Auburn's going to be a factor here until the, you know, until the end, until the end. So uh, that, that was obviously a, a very big visit. Eric Winters, you know, there's a lot of folks that believed Eric wanted to jump in the class, uh, you know, before the, you know, end of the year, before December, before January. And, you know, we were going through the transition of defensive coordinators 
Uh, and I think that with the new system, Eric Winters is sort of being recruited as, at a different role. I think he's going to be that hybrid safety. They call it the star, I believe, in this system. Uh, that's what they're targeting for. And I think you had to basically start over. I think you had to start over. You had to start over and say, hey, look, you know, this is our new d- defense. This is the new position we're going to have you at. Uh, we love you. We think you are an, a phenomenal athlete. And we think you're so such a good athlete, versatile that we want you in this role instead of just a plain old linebacker. We want you here. We want you in coverage. We want you in run support. We want you everywhere. And and I, I think that's one of the reasons you've seen sort of the brakes maybe possibly be pumped a little bit with him. But I think the hammer is about to go down as far as pushing him, uh, pushing for a commitment from him. Wouldn't be shocked if he was the next commit. I don't know that he, he will be, uh, but I would be, not be surprised in the next couple of weeks if they don't go ahead and push for a commit commitment from him. So Eric Winters is one to watch. He was here with a bunch of dudes from Enterprise High School. Uh, you got Zion Grady, uh, who came with him, his teammate, uh, a big-time uh, outside linebacker, edge recruit. Uh, there was a corner uh, that's from his team, Andrew Purcell, who is not – he's sort of flying under the radar but has some really good offers uh, at corner. So, you know, you got all three of those dudes on campus together. You know, we'll see what happens there. But I, I really like where Auburn sits with uh, with Eric Winters. What's going on with Alvin Henderson? You know, that's that's the guy that uh, he he's always been sort of, I'm about to commit, I'm not going to commit. I like to take my visits. Uh, electric running back from Elba does play for a small school, but he produces at an incredible level. And he also goes to camps and looks great uh, as well. He comes back in sort of a surprise. I don't know that he was necessarily scheduled. There was a bit, you know, everybody put out these big lists of people they expected to be here. And I don't believe he was on any of those lists, but he shows up. That's big. And then shortly either, Shortly before or shortly thereafter, uh, he releases that he's going to commit soon. Now, granted, he's done this multiple times, <laughs> but I think this time is, is is for real. And I think possibly sometime in early April, uh, you could see Alvin pull the trigger. Now, is that related to Auburn? Uh, him moving up, moving that date or like setting that date officially um, or at least announcing that he's about to set a date? Who knows? The timing is sort of suspicious. Um, it's I believe it's Auburn FSU, and it just depends. Auburn did have a couple of different running back prospects on campus this week, but they love Alvin. They love Alvin. They love, love, love to push for a commit uh, from Alvin. So uh, Alvin Henderson. So again, I have a, I confessed I was worried. I, I worried ain't is not really the right word. I would say. I wasn't worried, but I had my eye on some things, if that makes sense. I was concerned a little bit. I I was just, you know, it felt like uh, there was a window open. And Hugh said it. I felt like I agreed with him. There was a window open in the state of Alabama. And Alabama, in general, seemed to be seizing a little bit of momentum or maybe even, you know, for lack of better words, closing that door a little bit. Then you go and you, you you're back in town after spring break. You get a big commitment. You got more coming, uh, and you have one of the most massive recruiting weekends uh, I've ever seen uh, in the month of March. So, recruiting momentum feels good. Feels like we're moving in the right direction. Again, I've talked about March. I said I believe there'd be at least three commitments. Uh, de- depending on what you want to call Devin Williams, he was at the end of February. Uh, I'm not going to count him. I still think you got Traveris Tyson. I think you got two more out there. Now, um, there's a number of different guys that could be, but uh, I, these coaches, they have this thing, you know, like they're, it's stra- uh, planned out, st- strategery uh, on when they when they make the, let these things pop. So let's see what happens. But I feel so much better, and I think we all should feel much better after this weekend, after your big commit. Uh, love the way things look uh, in Atlanta and their surrounding areas, as well as, you know, you got guys from California, guys from Oklahoma, dudes from all over 
come to see what Auburn's all about. And anytime you can do that, that's a great thing. So let's keep our eyes out on recruiting and then let's keep our heads up because I think great things are still to come uh, along with uh, – I can't. I think A-Day might be the next big uh, visit day. So let's keep our eyes out there. Uh, before we go on to basketball, we got to give a shout-out to Plains Coffee. Use coupon code BUTTON for 10% off. It's an absolute waste of your time, your money, and your taste buds, quite frankly, to just continue to buy your big – plastic or aluminum canister of that old gr old coffee that's you know could have who god knows what in it that's been sitting on the shelves for months uh why do that when you can have freshly ground coffee literally the days before it ships hours before it ships uh and have it sent straight to your doorstep uh it makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense check them out plains coffee they got a roast for everybody dark light medium whatever and then if you don't like coffee, they got teas too. So show them some love, Auburn guy, uh, and you know, check it out. Like you'll have to, you'll have to have a conversation with the postman because the aroma of that freshly ground coffee could send them into a frenzy. And you got to make sure it gets to the doorstep. That's all I'm going to say. I love the, I love the postal service. I love everything they do for us. But this is this coffee is pretty irresistible. So check them out, PlainsCoffee.com. All right, basketball, look, what a freaking weekend, man. Holy cow. Auburn just continues to absolutely pummel people. It doesn't matter who it is. It does not matter who it is uh, as far as from an SEC perspective. Uh, you put us on a neutral court, and we po quite possibly will beat your brains in. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a very high chance that your brains will be completely smashed in. You will be gassed and we will be pedal to the metal uh, in the second half and they will just outlast you, outclass you, and just beat your brains in. It does not matter who it is. Guys that Auburn lost to in the, in the early in the year on the road, come back on a neutral court, which is what we said. You put us on a neutral court with anybody and we'll take your, take your manhood. And they did. They did that. You absolutely – emasculate South Carolina. You beat South Carolina so bad. South Carolina went into the game as a quad one. If you would have lost it, the game, it would have been a quad one loss, but you beat them so bad, they became a Q2 win. <laughs> go, go figure, go figure that. That's another conversation for another day is how stupid the Q system is, the quad the quadrant system is. Uh, then you have Mississippi State. You win your first game by less than double digits uh, all year. It, that was a battle. It was a physical battle. Mississippi loves to bang around, uh, and you just outlasted them. Again, you outlasted them. You hit your free throws late when you had to hit them, and that's what you had to see. You had Because you know that's going uh, to be a big thing in the tournament, closing out a game, being able to take fouls and hit your shots uh, when they're trying to extend the game. Auburn did it. The one and only time, I guess, maybe – I think you could count the Texas A&M game because it was like three points uh, within, I don't know, two or three minutes left, and Auburn had to hit a bunch of big free throws. And then you go to you play Florida, and granted, bless us, bless their hearts. Right off the bat, they had a terrible, terrible. Um, I almost said something, but I'm going to change what I was going to say because that would have been poor, <laughs> poor taste. But you just had a bad stroke of luck and uh, lost one of their better big guys. Uh, to a gruesome injury. Um, I haven't even tried to view the uh, replay because uh, it was it was that bad. It, the arena was quiet, but they're so deep at 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 that front court. They're so deep that they even they brought in some dudes that maybe even seemed even bigger uh, than the one that went out. So Florida's a really good team. They're very physical. They have great guards, and Auburn shut their ass out. I'm just going to say it, pardon my language, they shut them down. You're talking about a team that's averaged close to 100 points a game over the last five or six games. Now, granted, they did play Alabama twice, which definitely gets your average up there. They busted 100, dropped a dollar plus on them twice, but they're a very efficient, very good offense, and Auburn shut them down. 
They could not handle the pressure. They could not handle the aggressiveness on defense. Uh, and this team gets stronger and stronger and stronger. It's so funny. Um, I complained at times, maybe not publicly, <laughs> but there was some of you know some of the group chats and things that I was in. I complained at times. I was like, man, I just feel like. We're trying way too hard to make this 10-man, 11-man rotation a thing. I think it's hurting us. I think you got to shorten the bench. You know, go go eight, maybe nine. Go eight, maybe nine, uh, and get better and better and better. But we stuck with it. And now you have guys like Chris Moore who did not – quite literally did not miss a single shot in the whole tournament. Now he's not gonna he's not going and gonna give you a double double triple whatever, but he's gonna go in and he's going to play incredibly hard and make uh, make big offensive rebounds, putbacks. He had a big steal in the game that led to a, a fast break. Uh, I could not be more happy for the guy. You know, he's just he's he's stuck around. He's been here forever. He's always had a great attitude. He's never been the most gifted basketball player, but what he lacks in just natural ability, he outworks everybody at only like 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. Like, and he's playing big, big basketball, getting offensive boards, crashing, playing incredible defense. Uh, I mean, that's a guy who I'll, I mean, I'm be honest, that's a guy who I was like, dude – you don't have to play him. Like you don't have to play him. You, you shorten your bench, and he was one of the ones that I felt like, you know, you might look at, you know, taking his minutes away. And he did lose a lot of minutes, uh, but the minutes that he had in this tournament, he played uh, incredible. And I'm so, so, so proud of him. And then obviously, I mean, you could keep going. You know, Dylan, who's the best, got to be the best backup five in the country, uh, as far as when you talk about from a defensive standpoint. Minutes played, uh, he's he's unreal. He's unreal. What a one-two punch with Broom and him. Uh, you, you feel like you're going to get some sort of energy spark every time Dylan comes in, and and he does it. And he doesn't. He had a big game. He hit his free throws, uh, which is which is great. Had a couple of big dunks. Had a fast break with a little finger roll at the end. What? Dylan with a finger roll, just kissing it off the glass uh, like he's – like Kareem Abdul Jabbar or something, or Magic Johnson or something. It was it was great. Uh, on and and then KD who he's still struggling offensively, but golly, he plays so hard. He plays so hard on defense. Uh, and if you can just if we can just get him to, if he makes a steal, let's just you know t- turn around and find the point guard, okay? And then let's go get back on offense. Let's don't let's don't get out run the break because. Uh, he's going to kill somebody. I mean, he's going to he he's he just goes full speed, he, and he's probably going to hurt himself. Like it seems like I've never seen a guy every time he makes a layup, you look and he's three rows deep in the bleachers. I mean, dude, just going like just going crazy. So all these guys at, at times you're thinking, man, why do you keep trying to? It's like that. It's it's like off Mean Girls. Why do you keep trying to make fetch happen? I think that's Mean Girls. It just seems like why do we keep trying to make this ten man rotation happen. But it's paying massive dividends, dudes. Teams cannot hang; they cannot hang for for forty minutes. And all I mean, Janai Broom won the MVP of the whole dang tournament, playing like twenty three minutes a game. That's absurd. That's absurd. He's unreal, uh, and he doesn't have to play forty minutes because Dylan is so good off the bench. Uh, it's just, man, you go into the SEC tournament and you just absolutely stroke people. You beat, again, you beat South Carolina by 30. You 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 muster it up and you beat Mississippi State, who's hot, who was hot at beating the crap out of Tennessee. Very physical team. And then you play Florida, and they did have an injury early, but you still, um, I mean, you beat them essentially by 20 points. Uh, I know it wasn't, I think it was like 17 or something like that, but uh, – there was a time at the end of the game uh, around, I don't know, the 10 minute mark or something like that, where Auburn just completely put their foot down and it was over. Made, there was a, I think we shot well over 60% in the second half, just 
just running and gunning, dunking and hitting threes, uh, shooting great. It was just a, a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, for Auburn to win an SEC, uh, SEC tournament championship, it's big. Again, it's only, I think, your fourth ever or, or third ever. Two of them are by Bruce. It's just – just unreal. It's a ton of fun. This basketball team's a lot of fun. And now you switch gears and you're getting ready for the NCAA tournament. I've talked about how seeding, I think, is uh, flawed. Um, and I felt like – I feel like if you're going to just not, you know, look at the conference championship as far as anything other than, you know, an automatic bid, if you win it, uh, they're kind of pointless. They're kind of pointless, and that's a fun, you know, that's a fun tournament that you're sort of taking the incentive away of playing well in, other than the fact that no team's won the championship that hasn't made it to their semifinal. I don't know if it's ever, but it's been a lot over the last several, several years. So, again, last year, people forget. I, I, I've been – I was I was super mad when it first was announced that we were in – we're going to Spokane, and I'm not going to call it Spokane. Okay, I'm going to call it Spokane out of complete disrespect. I'm just disrespecting it straight up because uh, I think it's absurd that Alabama, Auburn, and UAB have to fly all the way across the dadgum country. But on the flip side, last year we did play Houston in Birmingham. So I don't know that there's a huge agenda against Auburn, uh, but I know I may have alluded to that <laughs> Uh, in the heat of the moment. So, but after thinking about it, I'm not necessarily thinking there's an agenda against Auburn. It's a bad break. You got to go all the way to Spokane uh, and play your first uh, two games. But I do think Auburn has the most favorable of maybe anybody walk to the three, uh, to the sweet 16. Uh, you got Yale, who's just not going to be able to match up athletically with Auburn. And then you got San Diego state who, Multiple, multiple experts talk about how overseeded they actually are. So, again, Sweet 16 would be awesome. Then you go play play UConn, who is just from an you know they the analytics love UConn just like they love Auburn. But you know what? You got to beat them eventually. You got to beat them eventually. You're either going to have to beat them now, or beat them in the uh, you know the national championship final four, something like that. Uh, it's not like they're just going to be a freebie. They're, you know, they're they're really really good. You know, maybe they get knocked off before they get to Auburn. Uh, maybe in the second round, but uh, that's not likely. That's not likely. They're just they're just that good. I, I think UConn is a very similar to a Florida in the in the standpoint that they got very good bigs and they're extremely extremely talented uh, at guard. So maybe a little bit maybe a little bit better version. I say a little bit. It could be a lot, uh, a lot of bit <laughs> better version uh, of Florida. So, uh, again, I hate the trip, but I don't necessarily hate the draw anymore. The four seed is silly. Uh, when you're sixth, uh, fifth in net, like what the the criteria, the, the net ranking that was built by the NCAA, like that's literally their ranking on how to rank a team to put them in the arbitrary quadrant system. The quadrant system is literally the dumbest thing that you could ever have to judge if a team's good or not, in my opinion. It's 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 ridiculous. Again, I already talked about it. If Auburn were to have lost to Mississippi State, listen to this. This is what's crazy. If Auburn lost to Mississippi State, they would have gained a quadrant win uh, based off of the road loss, I'm sorry, based off of the home win, uh, Mississippi State would have been just outside the top 30 in net. If they beat Auburn, they would jump inside it. So you're, you had a Q2 win that would have turned to a Q1 win with a loss, okay? But Auburn wins, so they do get that Q1, that, that and it was a Q1 win on a neutral side. So, again, if you lose the game, you still gain a quadrant one win. So, did, I mean, does that mean we're better now? Uh, when when games have already been played uh, um, like months ago and you win those games, uh, and at that point in time they're ranked something, and then as if if things change in the in the, later in the year, like you you got better, you're better now because they're they're arbitrary quadrant 
deal is different? That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. South Carolina, I talked about it already. You're playing them as a Q1 team, but you beat them and they fall out into a Q2. How does that make sense? <laughs> How does that make sense? Uh, and, and again, you drop from essentially like a 48 or 49 to like 51. So if they were 50, that would have been another quadrant one win, but they're 51 and it's a Q2 win. So it's like if you if you have a Q2 win, like nobody cares. It just doesn't even mean anything. It's it's silly. It's it's a waste of time. Uh it's just it, it's it's crazy. Uh and then obviously you pick up the quad another quad one win with Florida, but nobody cares because they had already submitted their ballot before you played the tournament. There's no reason uh the fit I, I don't get how the fifth team in net is the 15th overall seed. That makes no sense. That makes no sense whatsoever. But again, I'm over it. I'm over it. It is what it is. Auburn's going to Spokane. I don't care. If you want to correct me in the comments, I don't care. I'm calling it Spokane. I'm not calling it Spokane. That's silly. Number one, it's not spelled right. So I don't care. If it's if it's Spokane, there shouldn't be an E on the end. Okay, so you got an E on the end, you're Spokane. Nobody's ever been there, I don't think. So this may not even be a real place. But so you're going to be Spokane to me out of just sheer disrespect that three teams from Alabama have to fly all the way to freaking Washington, <laughs> all the way to freaking Washington for a weekend. Uh, there's there's so many jokes there that I'm just going to refrain uh, from going there with uh, as far as people from Alabama being in Spokane, Washington. But uh, but you probably know where I'm going. You probably know where I'm going with that one. So uh, let's get fired up. Let's get pumped. We got a Friday matchup, uh, and then we turn around and play again if we win on Sunday, which hopefully, you know, Auburn takes care of business against Yale, outclasses Yale. Uh, should be fresh. You got ten. You got that 10-man rotation, uh, and you got several, several days to prepare. And then you turn around, you're probably going to play either a UAB, uh, which would be a neat matchup. Um, with Andy Kennedy, who's got those guys, they just won their conference tournament playing pretty good basketball versus San Diego State, who has played good at times. I don't think they're the best shooting team. And, you know, again, a lot of teams, a lot of people say that they feel like they're overseeded, overseeded. So it's going to be fun. Tournament time is fun. Happy birthday to Bruce. Uh, happy 10 year anniversary to Bruce for coming and completely changing the trajectory of Auburn basketball, and making it fun. Uh, it's just, man. What, how thankful we should be. Build the statue, rename the court after him, let him pick whoever the next head coach is going to be. He deserves it because I, it's unfathomable to think about this Auburn basketball program, where it was and where it is now. 200 wins. Uh, he's, almost, he's only a couple of wins away from breaking Sonny Smith's uh, SEC tournament win record. Uh, you got two SEC tournaments out of the three or four total that you've ever won. Uh, and then all like essentially all, you know, all these different NCAA tournament appearances. Uh, and you got a team that's playing as good a basketball as, as any team that you've had at this point in time in March. And uh, they're ready to get after it. And the last time you were four seed, you went through murderers row and you made it to the final four. This one, you're going to have it again. Uh, and this team is good, and I, I think this team is built good enough to be able to handle it. So, again, let's have fun. Let's enjoy it. Let's see what happens with recruiting. Let's see how recruiting shakes out. I, I still think you're going to get a couple of big commits over the next couple of weeks uh, and put us even further ahead of where we were last year uh, and just sort of get us ahead of the game headed into the summer. So, again, a lot of good things going on on the Plains. I'm going to keep you updated on it. Follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie underscore five. You can find me in the Locked On Discord, the links in the bio. Like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, and we're going to have fun every time we do one of these things. We're going to get after it. We're going to get booging. And, and we're going to have a good time. Uh, I'll be back on Thursday, kind of preview the Yale matchup, hopefully update on some spring notes, spring practice notes, and uh, you're probably going to have some recruiting updates uh, as well. Another big – we're going to have some visits over this week. Uh, it's possible you could have a big five-star in today. Uh, offensive, another offensive lineman. 
Uh, so let's see what happens over the next couple of days, and we'll get back after it on Thursday. Uh, guys, I really appreciate it. This is episode 26, 26 of the Top Button Podcast. Stay button. Thanks for listening, and drive home safely. Yeah.